Hello and welcome. In this episode, we continue exploring pricing management modules. Specifically, we will be talking about margin components. Here you see a typical price component structure. That base price may be overridden by the sales price defined via the trade agreement. Once that sales price is defined, we can further modify or adjust that base price using the margin components. And once these margin components have been applied, there are discounts and rebates that can be applied further on top. Let's take a look at the price components that we have defined for margin components. We navigate to the price component codes. And in here I have created two codes. One is called standard price adjustment. It contains two attribute groups. These attribute groups will be used to define the attributes that will control when the price adjustment should be applied. The first attribute group is called adjustment header and the second one is called order basic. There are no price attributes defined on the line. And the second one that I have defined right here is called seasonal price adjustment. There are no attributes on the header but there is a single attribute group on the line called adjustment line. Now we will see how these component codes work together. What I have decided to do here is to start with a single sales order. This item has a base sales price of $100. So what I'll do now is I'll navigate to the price adjustments, margin component price adjustment. In here I have four price adjustments. And these adjustments look very similar to retail discounts. All four price adjustments are disabled. That's why on our sales order we do not see them. So let's start with this first price adjustment. This price adjustment is for price attribute group adjustment header. If we look at that group, it has two attributes, segment, which is a customer attribute and the order campaign. Our price adjustment is for a specific segment. In this case, it is for the segment service. The system shows us applicable customers. We have a single customer margin entry for which that service component is applicable. And the, our sales order is for the same customer. So we know that this price adjustment should be applicable to our sales order. In order to test that, all we need to do is enable this price adjustment, save that change, go back to our sales order, and instead of recreating the line, I will go and recalculate the price. So right now the price is $100. I will click on recalculate and we see the price has increased to $110. In order for us to understand why, we'll navigate to price details and we see that we have a price adjustment 009 applied, which is a 10% on top of the sales price. These price adjustments may be negative or positive. They can also be expressed as percentage or an amount. All right, so this is a fairly basic scenario. Now we'll navigate back to our price adjustment lists and in here I have a second price adjustment. It's still disabled but let's take a look how it was defined. It's still for the same attribute group called adjustment header but if we look at which level it is defined at it is for the order campaign promo one. Order campaign is an order attribute and our sales order is for the promo one. To check that we'll navigate back to our sales order click on the price and check the sales order attributes. We see that the promo one is the order campaign. So hence, this price adjustment should also be applicable to our sales order. Now we will go and enable that adjustment, save that change and go back to our sales order and recalculate the price. We see that the price remains $110. Why the second adjustment was not applied to answer that question, we need to go back to our price adjustment and take a look at this price attribute group. Remember, both adjustments are for the same attribute group adjustment header. If we look at it closer by clicking on it, we see that the segment has a higher rank than the order campaign. If we change that and move the order campaign higher and save that change, let's go back to our sales order and do recalculation. You see now that the price has changed to $90. That is because the adjustment defined for the segment, which was negative 10%, took a priority over adjustment defined for the order campaign. So this is an example of ranking within the same attribute group. Both attributes were within the same attribute group called adjustment header, and the ranking within that will define which of those adjustments will be applied. Now let's navigate to the list of our adjustments and let's take a look at the third 
adjustment here. You can see in the summary, it's also for the campaign promo one, but the difference here is it was defined for a different attribute group. The first two adjustments were for header adjustments group. This adjustment is for the order basic. It still contains the same order campaign attribute, but now it comes in from a different group. And in here, we decided to apply a negative 20%. Let's activate that adjustment, save that change, go back to our sales order and recalculate. We see that this negative 20% adjustment took a priori. To verify that, we'll navigate to price details and we see the adjustment number 11 was applied. Why the adjustment 11 overrode adjustment number 10? To answer that question, we now need to look at the price component code itself. If you look at it, we see that the order basic has a combination rank of 3000. And that's the group that was used to define that negative 20% adjustment. Whereas the adjustment header group has a rank of 2000, a lower rank. And that is the group that was used to define that negative 10% adjustment. That is why the negative 20% took over negative 10%. To validate that, we can go and change the combination rank for the order basic to a lower value of, let's say, 1000. So now it is below adjustment header. Save that change and go back to that sales order. We will recalculate the price and we see the price went back up to $90. So that was an example of competing adjustments that come in from different attribute groups. Now, let's take a look when we introduce an adjustment that comes in from a different component code altogether. We'll navigate to the list of our adjustments and we will take a look at the last adjustment here. This adjustment was defined for seasonal price adjustment code. Let's take a look at this a bit closer. That's the one that does not have any header attribute. All it has is the line attribute. It has this attribute group called adjustment line. If we look at it, it contains the category and the sales category references. And if we go back to our adjustment and review for which category this adjustment was defined, we'll click on edit line price attribute. And we see that this adjustment was defined for the category auto audio parts. And in preview section, we see that there is a one product that belongs to that category. And that's the product on our sales order line. So we know that this adjustment should also be applicable. And this adjustment is expressed not as a percentage, but rather as the $5 on top of the sales price. We will then go and activate that adjustment save that change, go back to our sales order and go recalculate the price. So the price is $94.50. Let's take a look at the price details. In here we see that we have applied $5 on top of the base sales price. So it made our price $105. And then we applied a 10% off that came in from that standard price adjustment. So that took off $10 and 50 cent of it. That's why the price turned to be $94.50. But why exactly was it applied in such sequence? Why exactly the amount was added before the 10% was subtracted? Well, to answer that question, we now need to look at the component structure itself. We'll navigate to the component code setup. And in here we see these two competing price codes one for the standard and one for the seasonal adjustment. And we see that this seasonal adjustment comes first and that's the one that brought that $5 addition to our sales price. And then the standard price adjustment has the higher priority. That's why it was brought after the $5 were added to our base sales price. What if we change that? What we can do here is we can increase the sequence code for our seasonal price adjustment to let's say 35, save that change. And now our seasonal price adjustment should be applied after the standard price adjustment. So the 10% should be subtracted before $5 are added. Let's take a look, go back to our sales order and do recalculation. We see the price has changed to $95 and under price details, we see that first we have applied the 10% off. So that made our price $90 
and then we added five dollars on top so that was an example of two adjustments coming from two different price component codes and finally let's go back to our adjustment list and let's take a look at this adjustment of five dollars I wanted to show you this checkbox right here, allow unit conversion. So we basically are allowing to convert that adjustment based on the unit that comes from the sales order line. Right now it's $5 off each. But what if I have a different unit on that sales order line? Let's go back to our sales order and let's change the unit to dozen. There is a unit conversion, 12 each equals to one dozen. And right away, we see the unit price has been calculated as 1140. And if we look at it a bit closer, we now see that we start with a base price of 1200. We have one dozen, that means it's 12 each, each is $100. Therefore, the one dozen is $1,200. Then we have this adjustment of negative 10%, so minus $120. So that will bring us back to $1,080. And then we have a $5 added for each, but we have a dozen, so that means it's 12 each. So that should add back $60 to our sales price. So it should be 1080 plus 60. And that is why our unit price is calculated as $1140. If we go back and check this checkbox that will prevent that unit conversion and then enable that adjustment again, we'll see that this $5 per each adjustment will not be applied. Click on recalculate. The price is $1080. There were no $5 per each added. And let's take a look at price details. We see that only single price adjustment was applied. That is because that $5 off adjustment is only applied when the unit is each. And we do not allow conversions from each to any other unit. So overall, I think it's a fairly flexible framework. It gives you a lot of possibilities in how you control the base price and any adjustments that will come with it. That is all I wanted to show to you today. Until the next time, take care.